to tie in with IKEA's People and Planet project blah 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 blah. Hey guys, or should I say, hey hey, which is Swedish for hey there, hey chums, hey friends, hey guys. I know, my, my talents astound. So I'm currently doing a project which has been set up by IKEA, although I've just found out that that's pronounced IKEA instead of IKEA. We, we're all saying it wrong. IKEA have teamed up with Hubbub, who are an environmental charity based here in the UK. Now, IKEA have got a people and planet positive mission, and you can read about that in a link. I'll put it down below. They've asked a group of people, which consists of bloggers like myself, some IKEA customers, and a selection of IKEA staff. They've allowed us up to £500 each to spend in IKEA on a select range of products to help us live a little more lagom. I hope I'm saying that right. Lagom. Which is the Swedish word for just enough. They want to help people live more sustainably and not over consume or take more than they need. Everyone in our group is at a different level. Some people haven't even really thought about sustainability until now, but they're really excited about it. And other people are already on the sustainable subway. <laughs> and in this day and age of consuming more than we really need, be it fashion, food, energy, gadgets, you name it, we're probably consuming a little too much of it. It can only be a good thing, because let's face it, we're kind of all a bit suffocated right now. So IKEA and Hubbub firstly asked us to come up with some resolutions, some goals for the project. So as many of you probably know, I try and live a zero waste lifestyle. I'm not perfect by any means. So at first I kind of thought, could more stuff from IKEA actually help me live more sustainably? And I really thought about it. And the answer is kind of yeah, as long as I take a log on approach to it. So I didn't want to just take as much as possible just because I've got 500 pounds to spend in store. I decided to only choose items which I thought I would really need and that would genuinely add value and allow me to live more in line with my values. I also wanted to try and avoid packaging as much as possible. I know it can be tricky because plastic packaging can sneak in everywhere. So my resolutions for the Live La Gomme project are, I want to grow some food and herbs, but there'll be no coriander because it's just disgusting. I already have a small herb box, but I think it'd be really nice to expand the range of herbs. And I've never really grown any food. So I'm thinking maybe garlic, something green and leafy, maybe kale or cabbage. Tomatoes, I'd like to try and grow tomatoes. Who knows in the British climate whether that would actually work. I've already got a few things which I've started to plant in little pots in the kitchen. So I'd love to put those out on the balcony and actually try and grow some proper food. My track record with growing things isn't great. I've probably killed a couple of chili plants now and the lemon tree didn't really make it through the summer. So it would be nice to try and grow something and not kill it off. I think I'd get a real sense of achievement from that. And what is more sustainable than growing your own? Bees are in a bit of trouble because we keep spraying crops with pesticides and they keep dying off. And basically we need bees in order to survive. So I want to bring in some bee friendly plants and put them out on our balcony. I'm thinking maybe some organic lavender and I'm going to do some research and find out what bees love. Since I started adopting a zero waste lifestyle about two years ago, it really encouraged me to start making things from scratch. I kind of did that before, but not really that well. But I want to take it to the next level and start making my own fermented food. I've already mastered kombucha, so I feel like I'm in a great place to start making my own kimchi and sauerkraut. Sauerkraut. So which products did I choose? Well, I really wanted to avoid packaging as much as possible, especially single-use plastic packaging, which can be a little tricky. So here's what I chose. It wasn't completely plastic-free, but I really tried. These are the Corken jars. I think I might struggle with some of the pronunciations of some of the products I've chosen, but that one seems pretty straightforward. That is a Corken jar. What's Corken? These are really great. They came with hardly any packaging, just a little bit of paper inside and some paper on top. I thought these were perfect for making my own fermented foods and generally storing items that I buy in bulk. So anything I buy without packaging, these will be really useful. And let's face it, they just look pretty in the cupboard. Let's not deny that fact. So as well as being something that I genuinely need and looking kind of cool, these are only 80 pence this size. Isn't that insane? They're made in Germany. These are the uh, Rajtan or ra ra Raitan. These are some spice jars, or I can use them for anything generally. Let's take them out. Let's unbox it. In Swedish, I don't know if you pronounce the J, like in Jaffa cakes, would you say Jaffa or Jaffa? I 
don't know. The Rai, the Rai. <laughs> See, I told you I wouldn't know how to pronounce half these things. So the Raj Tan, that's what I'm going with. Um, a little jars where you can store spices. Also, if I'm successful, please, please let me grow some herbs. If I manage to grow some herbs, then I can dry them out and store them in these little jars. This is the, oh boy, Aptitlig, Aptitlig bamboo chopping board. Now bamboo is a really sustainable material. It grows really quickly and it generally doesn't need any pesticides. I originally didn't have a chopping board in mind when I was doing my little shopping trip at Ikea, but I saw this and thought, actually I do kind of need a large chopping board. So I've started using this already and I'm really kind of in love with it. I deliberately chose an X display model because this was the only one that didn't have plastic packaging around it. For some reason, all the other chopping boards in this range were covered in plastic, although some of the other chopping boards in other ranges didn't have plastic on them. It was a bit weird. So come on, Ikea. This is the Ingafara, Ingafara. This is the Ingafara terracotta plant pot. I also chose a variety of plant pots in the soccer range. And I chose the soccer watering can. I thought I could leave this outside. It looks pretty sturdy. And I thought I could just let it collect rainwater and then use that to water the plants. How sustainable is that? I also got really excited about this next item. This is the grass lock. It's got wooden handles. So if I try and grow maybe any root vegetables, this would be ideal. Or I could fill it with some lavender and just make it a little haven for bees and butterflies. I haven't decided what I'm putting in it yet, but I just know that it's gonna be really useful and I think it's so cool. I'm not sure if it's big enough for me to have a bath in it. I also chose the Aplaro outdoor bench to put all the plant pots on and also use it to store anything like gardening tools or compost, etc. And I think it would look really nice on our balcony and just make it a little haven. I haven't assembled it yet, but it's gonna be my project for the weekend. There was a little bit of plastic inside, so I'm gonna see if I can take that back to the Ikea store and let them recycle it. I also chose this, the Bitter Gurkha watering can for any indoor plants. It's got a bamboo handle and it looks really cute and I thought if I don't use it as a watering can, I could use it as a sort of vase as well. Now I did get a little bit carried away in the experience and I probably don't really need this next item, but in the heat of the moment, I went for it anyway. It's the Hutton wine rack. I don't drink alcohol, but I do use wine to cook with and I really like the taste of alcohol-free beer. So I thought it'd be a really nice way of storing some of those bottles instead of just shoving them down behind the chair in the living room. It's also a little bit annoying because that's the one item that came wrapped in plastic. What was I thinking? I wasn't thinking. I also haven't assembled that yet, so that's another weekend project. So there you go, those are all the items that I chose to help me try and grow some plants and a little bit of food and some herbs and also try and make my own fermented foods. I'll keep you posted with how I'm getting on throughout the project. If you have any tips on making kimchi, sauerkraut or growing your own food and herbs at home, it would be great if you could put those in the comments. Seriously, I'm not green fingered, so I'd really appreciate that. I'm also thinking about maybe starting a little worm bin on my balcony. If you have any tips about composting, then please share your advice. It is thoroughly encouraged as I'm gonna need it. And I'll be playing the piano? No, I'll be blogging about it as well over on my blog, eco-boost.co. My hands just made a weird noise then. Sorry about that. Wasn't anything suspicious. Wish me luck.